Today we want to see API hacking. Under that we want to see following attack. IDOR, mass assignment, command injection, XML, external entity, NoSQL injection and JWT manipulation. Before we perform these attacks, let us get a brief idea about what is API and what are these attack types. API application programming interface is a set of functions and procedures that allows communication between applications. So let's say here we have a web or mobile application and a server which provide web services. Now these two can communicate with each other by using an API. The application makes an API call to access a web service and based on that it gets a response. API can be of different types like SOAP, Simple Object Access Protocol. Since it's a type of protocol, it's using a strict standard and using XML data format, which is not easy to implement. It has been replaced with the REST API, which is used type of architecture and gives more flexibility to developer to use different standards. There is another one that is called GraphQL. It's using API call as a query language to access multiple resources with a single request. Now, most of the applications that we use today are using REST API. This is how the REST API request look like. It's a request for a login resource and here is a request for user related services. Now these different requests, these different API calls are called as API endpoints. An application can use multiple API endpoints. It can use API endpoint for third party servers. Like here we have a server for weather forecast. So the application can make an API call to get a weather forecast for a specific location. Now let's say this application is used by the attacker. The attacker can study the call and response of different endpoints and can perform the attacks like IDOR, mass assignment, NoSQL injection, XSE, command injection and JWT manipulation. IDOR, insecure direct object reference. In this attacker gets the unauthorized access of an object by using direct reference. So let's say a user uploads a file in this application, then an API call will be made to this upload endpoint with a post request and a reference ID will be used. Now if this user is an attacker then he will change post request to get and change this reference ID. Once he changes the reference ID, he gets the file with this same ID. It means he able to directly refer to this upload object by changing the reference ID. Now the attacker will change this reference ID to get other user files. Since the attacker able to get the access of other user files, so there is a broken access control. That's why it is also called as broken object level access control. IDOR and BOLA, these two are the same thing. Mass assignment. In this attacker assign a value to a server side variable. So when a user log into this app, an API call will be made to login endpoint with the following data, username and password. In this response, the server send the username and the admin status. So there is an admin variable which is set to false by default. Now, if the attacker using this application, he will register a new user in which the request will be sent to the user API endpoint. And in this, the attacker send the following data that is username, password and set this variable admin value as true and get the admin access to the server. Command injection. And this attacker inject the system level command through API. So let's say this application used by the admin who want to get the OS information of the target server. So you will send the API request to this sysinfo endpoint and get the OS information. Now here we can see that this endpoint is using uname which is a Linux command to execute on the server and get the OS information. Now if it is used by the attacker then he can inject his own OS command and get the result like ls to get the result of all the files in a current directory. NoSQL injection. In this attacker injects the NoSQL query in the user data to attack NoSQL database like MongoDB. So let's say user search for a file, then the following data will be sent, search file name. This query will be used as a NoSQL query for the target database. Now let's say if the user is an attacker, then he will inject the logical condition in this query like this and it will send to the server. In the result, it will get the list of all the files. XML external entity. In this attacker creates an XML entity with a malicious value and inject in the user input. This malicious value can be a command or a location of a file in the target server. Now let's say this user search for a file by sending a request to this API file search with the following data that is file name in the XML format. This file name in the XML format will look like this. Now the attacker will create an entity like this. This entity is code123 with a value of the location of a file that is at cpasswd. Now this file name will be replaced by this entity like this. Once it is sent to the server, then the attacker will get the content of this file passwd, which is the list of all the user. JSON Web Token None Algorithm In this attacker change JWT algorithm to none and manipulates the payload for gaining unauthorized access. So when a user logs to a server, server sends JWT to a user. Now this JWT will be sent with each request as an authorization token. This JWT looks like this. This is in base64 URL encoded format. When we decode it, it will look like this. The first part is called header. It contains the algorithm and type. Second part is payload, which contains user related information like name and privilege. The last part is a signature, which is used to verify the token. Now when a user make any changes in the payload, then signature will be changed and this token become invalid. So let's say if the user change the algorithm to none, then the signature will have no significance. Now the attacker can change the payload. Let's say 
to make the admin value true. And this modified JWT will be sent to the server and the attacker gets the admin access. For the lab setup, we are using VMware. In that, we are running Kali as attacker machine and Ubuntu in which we are going to run a server. We are going to use a Docker image of the server, so make sure that Docker is installed. If it is not installed, we can use the following command to install it. Once it is installed, then we are going to install Docker Compose, which will be used to run multiple containers at the same time. So we can use the following command. Once the Docker Compose is installed, we can download the required package for the server from the git repository by using the git clone command. So once it is downloaded, dwws node directory will be created. Now let's go inside the dwws directory. Here we can see that there is a file docker-compose.yml. It contains a list of all the required images that we need to run. So now here we can simply give the docker compose up command, which will use this file to run all the container. Now it will be started. Let's go back to the attacker machine. In this, we will set up the domain name to a target server IP by making the changes in the host file. We can access the host file by using the following command. Now in this file, we can see that this is the target server IP and we have set up the domain name dvws.local. Now we can access the target server by using this domain name. So let us close it. Now we're going to start a burp suit. So go to the web application analysis and here we can see this burp suit. Once it is started, go to the proxy tab, switch off the intercept, go to the option and here select this proxy. We are using this burp suit as a web proxy so that we can intercept all the API call and response. Now once it is done, we will start the browser. In the browser, we have to set up the proxy settings. So go to the preferences. In that, we go to the settings. In here, you have to select the manual proxy configuration. And here we have set up the proxy that is port 8080. Once it is done, then we can access the target site by using the domain. So we get the following page. Let us register a normal user and make some entry in the site. So we create an account. This user is registered. Now let us reload the page and we log in with that user. Now go to this notes area and here let us enter some notes. Now here we can see that we have created few notes. So let's go to the login screen. Now let us create other user which is the attacker. So we have created this thunder user. Now let us log in with this user. Now before we log in we can start the intercept here start the intercept now we can intercept all the request and response so here we can see that the request is sent as username and password let's forward all these go to the notes area now let us create a note test note create note here we can see this request is sent and this API is called now forward all the request here we can see that our note is added now let us update this note click on update now you can see the request. Now here we can see that there is a reference ID is used for this update request. Now let us forward this. Now here we can see that it has been updated. Now let's go back to HTTP history. And here you can see that's all the request. This was the request. So let us see the response for this request. Now let us send it to repeater. So here we can see that this reference ID is used to call this object. Now let us change this request to get and see if we are able to access this data. Get and let us remove this. Now let us send it. So here we can see that in the response we are able to get the same data. So it means we are able to use this reference ID. Now how about if we change this reference ID to other ID. Let's say 1. If we send this. Now here we can see the data of other user, that is the user Mars. Here we can see that event 
seminar. Same way we can change this reference ID and get the access of the notes of other users. So here we have other notes. So that's how the ID door can be performed. And if you see this login, here we can see the res response. And if you go down, in the response we can see that there is a variable admin which is set to false by default. Now there might be possibility of mass assignment attack if the attacker can assign a value that is true value to this admin variable. Let us try out this. So for that we are going to create a new user. So let's go back to our browser, go to the login page, forward this. Now in here let us create a user, click on register. Here you can see that the request is sent, username, password. This, these are the requests which are sent by default when we register a new user. So how about if we assign a value to that admin variable in this request. So we can use the following admin equal to true. Now let us send it forward. Now we can see this user is created. So let us reload this page. Now let us log in with that new user. Login. Now we are able to log in with this. Now let us check it. Go to the HTTP history. And let us see this login. In the response, we can see this admin is set to true. Now we are having the admin access. So let us check it. Now here we can see that we are able to access the admin area. Now here we can see that there is an interesting thing. Here we have some information about the target server. Let us check this HTTP history. So here we can see that there is an API sysinfo with a uname. Uname is a Linux command. So this API is using a Linux command executing in the target server and getting the result. So let us send it to the repeater. Now, there might be possibility of command injection. Let us try out. So if you change this to other command, say ls and send this request. Here we can see that we got the list of files in the current directory. Let us search for a username. Let us use the username Mars. Click on search, go to the proxy. Here we can see that the request is sent in XML format. And the SOAP API is called at DVWS user service. Now there might be possibility of XSE attack. So let us try out that. First we send it to repeater. Now in this we are going to create an entity. So let us remove this. Now to create an entity, we use the following code. So here we can see that we have created this entity code one, two, three with a value location of this file at cpasswd. Now let us add this entity in the place of Mars. Now let us send it. Now once we send it, so in the response, we can see that we have got the list of all the users in the target system. That is the content of passwd file. So that's how XSE attack can be performed. Now let's go back to our browser. Let's go back. Now go to public node search. Go to proxy. Forward these requests. Now let us search for a node. Now here let us search for a node. Let's say event. Now here we can see that this query is sent. This query will be used as a NoSQL query. Now let us inject a logical operation in it. So let us send it to repeater. Now let us add a logical condition. So now this query become true. So when we send it, the server will respond with all the nodes that is stored there. So let me remove that. 
Now let us send this request. So here we can see that we have got all the nodes of all the users. So that's how NoSQL injection can be performed. For JWT attack, we're going to use a extension that's called JSON Web Token. This we can get from the vApp store. So let me enable this. Now once it is enabled, you will get this tab here. In the browser, go to the following URL and make sure that intercept is on. Now in this, let us log in with a normal user. So the normal user is JWT test and password is JWT. Now let us log in. This API is called authentication slash none forward. Now in here, we can see that this is a JWT token. Now if you go to this JSON web token, here we can see that this is the header algorithm. This payload is name JWT test. And this is the signature. Now if you forward this, so here we can see that current user is JWT test. Now we have to get the admin access by modifying the JWT token. So let us see how we can do that. Let us log in again. Now again we have these parameters. Select the none option. And then we modify it. as admin and if you go back here you can see that our JWT has been modified and here we can see that we have got the admin so that's all for today see you next time